Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dot to Dot. Uh, we're going to look at Lot 5 and the little round token that was found on Lot 5. And I'm going to discuss a little bit today about the historical narrative that is built around this object. Uh, we don't know whether it's true or not, but let's go to Google Earth. And on Lot 5, they found this round you can see it's a round piece of lead with two holes in the middle. And they had an expert come on uh, who is an expert in coins. Uh, I don't remember his last name. His first name is Sandy. And he basically said 100% for sure that this was Roman and that it was from around 500 AD. So... <sighs> Now, can we say that that is true? In fact, I mean, he is an expert. So is this true? Well, in the Quest of Oak Island, uh, res uh, the research group on Facebook uh, with John Stemmer, uh, a person uh, that did some research on this uh, called uh, Daniel Spino, came up with this idea right here of what it could be. And Daniel says that this is really just a toy that was fabricated by a kid. And these are basically toys that were uh, made during, you know, the 17th century, and they were uh, popular in Europe and colonial America. So the question is, is which is true? Here we have an expert saying that uh, the uh, the one hand it's 500 AD that it's ancient Roman and that the lead came from somewhere along the belt going from uh, Iran to through Turkey up through Italy and Spain and France and the other uh, Daniel Spino says that it could be something like this. And it's really impossible to really ascertain which is true. And this brings us back to the historical narrative of where you can go with Oak Island. And the, the problem with historical narratives is there's so many different possibilities that can be uh, woven through history that it really uh, has to be taken with a grain of salt. It has to be uh, researched and looked at in different contexts, in different, uh, how can I say, the, uh, the weaving of different time periods. And these time periods of all the artifacts on Oak Island are great. Well, we have this one here, and we also had the uh, the Roman coin, I, I, got, I forgot to bring that up. We also had the Roman coin that was found on Lot 5. So these time periods of all the artifacts are great. We have the, one of the first artifacts that is early was the twig that was found underneath the uh, paved area in the swamp which was dated by carbon-14 testing to 1200 AD. And then we have the other artifacts that are found on Oak Island that have a wide range from 1200 AD all the way up to the 1700s. So what is this telling us? And a lot of these artifacts are for digging, and these two things are for drill sharpening and drill, uh, drill uh, rock drills and files and chisels. It does tell us that they were doing a lot of rock and digging on the island. But as far as the historical context of when this was happening, we have a wide range. The, it's, it's a long time period of these artifacts. So as far as giving us a clue of when the mystery or what happened on Oak Island, 
uh, when it happened is really difficult to ascertain through the artifacts that are being found. So one of the people that I've been looking at uh, recently is a author, and he also has a YouTube channel named Court Lindahl. And Court Lindahl, he basically has a vi some videos that talk about the uh, the Bill Jackson uh, documents, which are right here. And these are the documents that uh, myself and Olivier from Oak Island Research have been studying. And my main concentration was in decoding the uh, information that was given by Bill Jackson and uh, to ascertain what it meant. And in that investigation, uh, I came up with more of a geometric solution to the mystery, basically telling where the uh, possible tunnel entrances, and this up here is a is are some documents that are put together like a puzzle, and it is basically showing the underground tunnel system of Oak Island. The uh, the Zena Halper map or the Oak Island map gives us an indication of basically how to set up Nolan's Cross. And no, uh, the La Formula is also a, a cipher similar to the 90-foot stone that is given, giving you a, what, a direction of the 45 degrees in which that geometry tells you where the entrance is to uh, enter the tunnel which is up here uh, that goes into a vault. So the, the documents of Bill Jackson, we have linked these together as part of a solution. Historically, they have no context. Um, there's many people that say they're fake, and there's many people that say that uh, these were written by the same person. And this may be true, but the the fact that we're that I'm concentrating, and so is Olivier from Oak Island Research, is that it's not so much are they fake, because nobody can really say that they are or they aren't, but it's more about the information that they deliver through their decoding. And so back to. Uh, Court Lindahl, is his videos basically give you a very detailed historical um, narrative that tells you about how these documents are integrated into the secret society. It's not so much that they were made or created by the people who deposited whatever is on Oak Island, but they were made and created by people who knew were part of secret societies and that were part of uh, the, the knowledge about this legendary um, mystery that has spanned back from the time of the Knights Templars and may have originated from the Knights Templars to through the centuries, even up to uh, the 19th century. And Bill Jackson was one of those people that basically did 30 years of research in Hunter Mountain and exploring the Cremona documents, which uh, Court Lindahl gets into very extensively. And he is the person who presents these documents. Now, these documents, a lot of people say, were fabricated. But the fact of the matter is, is these were hidden and disguised by Bill Jackson. And one of the things that uh, is very notable 
is that he left clues to find them and he called them the key. And let's see if I have that. I don't have that up yet. Let me get this up. The, the key to, uh, was in this note right here where Bill Jackson left a note in the back of the book. And this is how they found the La Formula and Xena Halper map. And he, if you know, he says, Anadi holds the key now. And this is referencing the, the Xena map and La Formula. That is why we use the page. And then he gets into a long uh, thing right here about the Frenchman was right. They wanted the info about the tunnels. And so they bought them from me, but they didn't get it. In other words, I don't know what that means. Either they didn't understand or they didn't receive them. And then he says, who has it now? And I think it was broken up into eight pieces. I have four. And what happened to the rest? So these, this, these last lines, actually all the lines except for the first line, are referring to the document of the this one right here. The my clicker doesn't work as good. Let's see. Is referring to this document right here, which we call the Antiar schematic, which gives the basically a view of the tunnel system under Oak Island. Now, this information is not necessarily by the people who originally deposited the um, whatever is deposited on Oak Island or made this vault. This is all information that is most likely been discovered by other people and it is uh, written in a way that is giving us this information either by decoding, by encrypting it within a map or encrypting it within a cipher. It's also known that the, this, uh, the Antiar schematic also may have been done with a, an invisible ink. And this is why it's so burnt and why it looks so modern in uh, the tracing of, of the schematic itself is because this, just like other uh, documents that Bill Jackson had handled, uh, mainly the what he is called the lemon juice documents, they learned that uh, if, if they treated it with lemon juice and heated it up, that it would uh, give us uh, the what is written on it, which was basically invisible until they did that treatment. And this is something that was done to this document after what was called the lemon juice documents. And I think they learned at that time uh, because the lemon juice documents ended up catching on fire. And I think they learned at that time, if we want to preserve this, we have to trace it out and give uh, you know, preserve what is on there uh, through tracing it out. So uh, this is probably what was done with this document. Now, there's a long story about this document. It was basically sent away by Bill Jackson, and there was writing on the backside of this schematic, which um, was done in, it was had part of this cipher, we believe, that La Formula, you can see that the middle piece right here is the same shape as La Formula. So this writing would have been on the back of this document. And then there was also writing on this document that was in Theban, which is an ancient uh, unknown language. And this is all written in uh, Don Rue's book, which I mentioned in my last video. So... I guess what I'm trying to say is that the, the historical context of Oak Island is not necessarily 
uh, cut and dry, and it's spanning over many centuries. The artifacts at least are. And the, uh, the historical narrative can be um, pretty much speculation. Uh, the Cortland Dow videos, and I'll leave a link in the description uh, and you can watch them. He gives a very uh, credible and it's very detailed and very, uh, how can I say, interwoven with a lot of things that a lot of people don't really believe. And it is quite unbelievable. And the the uh, notion that you get from Cortland Dow's research is that this is a great mystery of Oak Island. Uh, this is a great mystery that has been brought to Oak Island and that it has been sought after for centuries by people who are in the know, who are part of secret societies such as the Knights of Malta, uh, the Martins Society, the Freemasons, uh, the Knights Templar, uh, the Order of Christ, all those different organizations had the, some people in those organizations had knowledge of this and they are all trying to uh, seek it out. So as far as my uh, contribution to this mystery is concerned, it is really just basically uh, in the decoding of the Oak Island map and also the uh, La Formula and also the Antiar schematic. And these, map, these maps put into position a, uh, let me turn off the artifacts, put into position the ability to discover the landmarks on Oak Island and to also get in position to discover Nolan's Cross and also the, the 45 degree angle in La Formula, which takes you to the oak and to the oak tree and the 522 entrance, which is part of the uh, the first entrance of the Antiar schematic. And it also is very much uh, oriented with Round Island, which gives us our east and west uh, orientation of this map. And also it is related to Frog Island in that this position, which is noted on the map, gives us another orientation these, when these are lined up, this map is oriented. And also this, uh, this right here uh, is the scale line that goes from an extension point that gives us this uh, 1347 uh, pied dimension, which is the scale. So we have the orientation and we have a distance scale and that's all we need in order to establish this geometry on Oak Island and discover where the entrance is to the tunnel that leads to the vault on Oak Island. This has been my uh, focus. Uh, the, histor the historical um, narrative is something that I haven't really had time to get into nor do I really have the ability to do such research. Um, it's quite a feat to do historical research, and I really have a lot of respect for the historians. But uh, this is something that uh, will go on, and hopefully one day uh, the historical narrative <clears throat> or the geometry will conform to the historical narrative, uh, at least if this uh, entrance is found on Oak Island 
and the other entrance that is on the other side of the island, uh, which I have said in previous videos, then uh, the narrative of uh, who planted whatever it is on Oak Island will be established. So check out Court Lundau's videos. I'll put a link in the description. And thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.